Hey, welcome back everybody. Today, let's talk about different tractor tools to put in a ditch, a swale, a trench, whatever you want to call it. We have four options right here behind us, four different tractor tools. Not every tool out there that's available, but four of them we have here on hand. So we'll tell you the pros and cons of each. If you already have one of these tools and you're looking for a different application, well, maybe this will kind of get those juices flowing. Or maybe you're trying to justify a new tool and want to see if you can find another use for it that maybe you didn't think of before. After that, to give you a bit of a visual, we're going to be digging up some ground right here where I'm standing. We're gonna end up putting a food plot in a little bit later this spring, but do a little test area here, show you what these different tools do in action. Now, while I have used every single one of these tools to do some sort of ditching, I'm not a complete pro at it, so forgive me, but nonetheless, you'll get an idea of how they can perform, the strengths and the weaknesses, and help guide you to the right decision. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about price. For most of you, the cheapest option is gonna to be to use your front end loader with the bucket on there because most of you already have that tool at the ready. Second cheapest is gonna be the stump bucket, and this is gonna be 18 inches deep front to back. We do have an HD version coming out as well that's 27 inches front to back, so let that guide you to how deep you can dig with this. Of course, this is great for a lot of other applications too, just like a bucket, but you can dig trees for holes, pop stumps, take out big boulders, do the trenching that you'll see today. A lot of different applications for it, a pretty versatile little tool. Jumping up in price a decent amount is gonna be a rear blade, and some of the really small blades may not tilt like this one does here, um, and some smaller blades are kind of in between. The smallest and, and this size may not tilt as much, but this will actually tilt 30 degrees if you want it to. I've got it in the 15 degree offset position, I think 30 degrees is too much. Uh, found that out recently, just puts too much strain on the tractor, too hard to keep a straight line. We're gonna use the 15 degree tilt that's on here today. Of course, a lot of different applications for this tool as well for your driveway, for landscaping needs too. Let's take a look at the most expensive. Now far and away, the most expensive tool we're gonna look at today is gonna be the backhoe. A lot of you guys love them out there, would not be without one. I totally get it. Today, we're not gonna utilize the full capability. Of course, this will dig way deeper than anything else out there, but I'm thinking more like a drainage ditch for water runoff, a shallow trench for maybe some electrical lines, something along that. So we're gonna stick with around a foot deep overall, the max depth there, and see how quick we can do it with each one of these tools. Now there are a few other factors to consider. So with three of these tools, the rear blade, the backhoe, and the stump bucket, you can go straight along right with your ditch that you're digging. But with the regular bucket that's on your front end loader, you need to have enough space to come at it from the side, perpendicular to the ditch that you wanna put in. And so if you do have tight areas, maybe whether it's a building, a fence, landscaping, trees, whatever else is in your way, then you're not gonna have enough room to come at it from the side, and that could be a severe limitation depending on your application. So something else that I found is that a bucket is actually really good to get nice, clean, consistent cuts if you can come at it from the side on each side of your ditch. It's gonna leave a really clean, finished, kind of knife sharp edge almost for your ditch compared to the rear blade that kind of clumps up a little bit. The stump bucket also clumps up a little bit, and your backhoe is gonna have basically just a straight wall edge all the way down there too. So depends what the finished result is that you're looking to do. You could always come at it with a combination of tools. Another factor to consider is speed, right? Efficiency on how fast you're gonna get your job done. And this may or may not be a big deal. If you only have a small area to do versus you have a lot of area to do, well, that could be more of a factor. And again, we're basing this on about 12 inches deep or so. So not a, a three foot trench that really requires the backhoe. So I'm gonna give you my two cents on it and everybody's gonna have their own opinion, right? But I think as far as speed goes, efficiency to get it done, it's either gonna be the rear blade or the stump bucket. I think there's gonna be the fastest by far compared to uh, the regular bucket and the backhoe. Another consideration is gonna be operator comfort when you're using it. And I think that anything where you're sitting on a seat and not having to turn your back and turn your neck is gonna be more comfortable. And so with either one of the buckets or the backhoe, you're sitting on an operator seat and just looking forward to get your job done. That leaves the outlier as the rear blade where you are turning around to see what's going on on a pretty regular basis. If you don't look back there to see what you're doing, you're gonna wind up making a mess. Now, I think it's worth mentioning that with a stump bucket or even the regular bucket, visibility from the operator seat can be a bit challenging. So it takes a little bit of feel, a little bit of practice to get used to that. Something to help keep you online is to use what they call a center line marker or a center marker. On the John Deere, you can see this chrome piece in this little center line ridge. Most other tractors are gonna have something along the same line. So you can keep a center line on what you're doing, where you're going. And so even if you can't see the bucket at work, you can look ahead and make sure you're on the right path. And as far as a learning curve, you know, if you can just hop on your tractor, get to work and, and figure it out right away versus what's gonna take a little bit more time to figure out. 
Well, I'd say the bucket's gonna be the absolute easiest, right? You probably have the most experience, at least with your loader joystick and controls. Pretty straightforward on what to do with the loader bucket. Not too far behind that will be the stump bucket. I think the rear blade is gonna be a little bit distant away from the buckets. Now with a rear blade like this one, you have a lot of adjustments you can make. Of course, you can angle the blade left or right this way to push or pull dirt one way or another. You can tilt it, right? You can, we talked about that earlier, 15, 30 degrees either way. And then you can actually offset the whole thing over to one side or another if you wanna get outside your tires. So there's a lot of different adjustments to make if you want to. I felt that making too many adjustments was just complicating it, and so you wanna keep it simple for most applications. And so while backhoes are a heck of a lot of fun to use, they do have probably the steepest learning curve of every attachment that we're talking about today. You have the completely different controls that most guys aren't used to unless you came from a construction industry. A lot of fun to use, takes a while to figure out how to make it all work together and be a really good operator, but if time is on your side, you have nothing to lose. Now I know what you're thinking, where do I buy these tractor attachments at? And we sell tractor attachments. Visit goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. So the rear blades, replacement buckets, stump buckets, well, we don't really sell backhoes, but we sell a ton of tractor attachments for a front end loader for a three point hitch. And we really do ship all over the USA. So give us a shot, goodworkstractors.com. Alrighty, so we're gonna give you a little field test right now. We'll probably start off with the front end loader with a bucket there. That way we're not driving over other ditches, but we gotta come at that from the side. We'll knock that one out first. I don't know, do maybe 10, 15, 20 feet. Nothing crazy, but enough to give you an idea.
Alrighty guys, a little bit of a summary here for you. Now this first one was with the front end loader, the regular bucket on there. You can see the nice clean cut on this side over here. I could have repeated that for the other side, so just imagine that if you want to, but just for the purposes of time, we shortened it up. But very nice, very consistent, easy to do, probably the easiest of all of them to do in my opinion. Now the downside is you have to come at it from the side, right? So you have to have a lot of room. Well, the more room, the better to be able to come at it this way. And same thing on the other side, if you want to come at it and attack from both sides, obviously you don't need to do that, but a big point of consideration. All right, next up here is the stump bucket. And you can see it's a totally different type of a trench. Looks quite similar to a backhoe bucket trench, really. Um, not the tapered sides like you had on the uh, the front loader bucket, which is okay. It's gonna be narrower, narrower footprint. The big benefit with this one is you're driving right along in this line. You don't have to come at it from the side. Uh, you might've seen and noticed that you would have some piles of dirt, sod, whatever else, just kind of pile up there. And so I would come back and I would just level down with that whole back plate and just kind of push it along towards the end. So you don't want to drive over all those humps all that much. You're going to have more inconsistent results there. So that's what I was doing when you saw me going back and forth with the loader and the back plate just kind of flat with the stump bucket. Now this one was by far the quickest uh, that we got done. A little bit inconsistent. I could have been taking more time if I wanted to and made it really perfect, but I'm just kind of giving you a decent look at it here. You can take all the time you want to and, and make it completely perfect or hand spade it afterwards if you want to to have the perfect uh, level bottom on there. But a pretty good look at it here, but let's take a look at the rear blade. All right, so the rear blade today was not cooperating with me. You know, I was trying to take a little bit of a different approach than I did the last time I was using the rear blade and it just didn't work out so well. So I ended up going back to what I did before, which is taking a little skim off of there, like a, a shallower angle. And so you're gonna, that's why you're gonna see this is the widest footprint really of all of them, um, because it's a shallower angle, which is good, I guess, if you wanna be able to drive over it afterwards as well. Um, but it took a lot of passes. It just wasn't really working all that well for me today. Probably just inexperience. I haven't done it a whole lot. So what did work better is coming in at it from the side and, and just dropping the blade down and pulling everything out this way. Again, you need to have a lot more room to be able to maneuver around the ditch or the, the trench that you want to put in, but doing so worked pretty well and you can see the finished results. So coming at it from the side did end up working pretty well, gave similar results to the front end loader bucket, but why use a separate tool if you already had the bucket? And this one was also the most uncomfortable having to face backwards with my back and neck twisted pretty much the entire time. All right, so here you had the backhoe and it was, um, backhoes are always fun to play around with. You know, I didn't do a great job. I was. This is the last one. I was kind of in a rush, so the bottom's not very level. I had one loose joystick there that I really should have tightened up, and so it kept wobbling on me, and, and uh, I couldn't quite control it as well as I wanted to. But overall, decent results. Of course, you can go way deeper with a backhoe than with any of these other tools if you need to. A lot of repositioning, though. You're always guessing. You want to go just as far as you can and have enough reach, but not go too far, because then you end up with a, a hump there that you have to come back and clean up later on. So you know, backhoes are great. Um, they do a good job overall. For this type of work, I think you can get it done a lot cheaper though. All right, well, that's gonna wrap it up for us today. Hopefully it gave you a good visual at what these different tools can do. I'm just a guy with a bunch of tractors, right? So I'm not a complete pro, so you can probably do a lot better than I am here, especially if you take more time. So do what you want with this information. If you already have some tools, maybe you didn't know or realize you could do this type of work with them, or if you're looking to buy that new attachment, maybe this helps seal the deal. Again, we do sell and ship tractor attachments all over the country, so check us out at goodworkstractors.com. We're happy to help. And if you did enjoy today's video, we'd love to have you tag along. We're putting out videos all the time. We have over 500 videos now out there for you to hopefully you enjoy. Hit that subscribe button just right underneath the video, completely free, no obligation, nothing like that. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.